boys and girls. It is so good to be back together once again. <gasps> knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Boo who? Boo who? Why are you guys crying? Don't you know that no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening around you, that you, that I, that we, we serve Maestro. And awesome God yes we do we serve an awesome God boys and girls and we can never ever forget that but speaking of boo boys and girls I am so glad boo are with me today that we are together learning God's truth that boo are here to <laughs> all right High fives, pound out, and church hugs, because it is time to get into our message. But before we get into today's message, it's a part two. Let's review what we learned in our last message. Now, we learned last week that um, the words that we talked about last week came were words that God gave Habakkuk. That's right, and Habakkuk is one of the 12 minor prophets in the Old Testament, and we talked about what his name means, and his name actually means to embrace, to cling to, to hold on, to never let go, to never give up. Now Habakkuk, boys and girls, was written about 600 years before the birth of Jesus. That's right. During a time when the children of God, the people of God, no longer cared about God, followed God, or worship God. Instead, they turned their backs on God and rejected God. And the city of Jerusalem we talked about last week, way back then, was much like America is right now, today. We learned, we talked, that in less than 300 years, a country that was founded for their love and worship of God a country whose laws and ways of life were formed from the word of God and the pursuit of God. A country that was filled with people who were on fire for God. Just 300 years later, that same country, while has turned from a place that was on fire for God to a place that wants to set fire to the things of God, boys and girls. A place that doesn't want students reading their Bibles during free time. And a place that doesn't want students sharing God's word during lunchtime. And a place that doesn't want students praying at school anytime, at any time, boys and girls. A nation whose rules and laws are no longer formed and come from the word of God, but actually they want to replace the word of God. That's crazy. You telling me? <laughs> that is crazy, boys and girls. It is crazy. Yes, maestro. It's crazy any time that we think that we are smarter than God. It is crazy any time we want to live our life without God. It is crazy any time we think it's okay to disobey and rebel against God, to live life without God. That's just plain crazy. Not only was Habakkuk a prophet of God, we learned, who shared the word of God with the people of God, but Habakkuk showed you and I, the people of God, what to do when the world doesn't match God's word. Hey, hey, yeah, I have a question. What do we do when we have a question? Can I ask you my question? Well, we ask God our questions. We go to God in prayer with our questions. We ask him. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the word ask or a form of the word ask is mentioned over 3,000 times in the Bible. Habakkuk reminds us that we should always take advantage of God's invitation to go to him with our questions, to go to him in prayer. Because boys and girls, only God has all of the right answers. Only God knows everything. Only God. But we also learned last week that God is faithful 
to answer our prayers. And God is faithful when we go to him with our prayers. But does that mean that we always like God's answer? Does that mean that we always agree with God's answer? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so, boys and girls. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. We must remember that God's answers are not about making us comfortable, and God's answers are not about making things easier. God's answers are about equipping us, and God's answers are about preparing us for all that he desires to do in us, with us, through us, and for us. See, sometimes, boys and girls, God doesn't deal with what's going on around us because he's much more interested on what's going on in us. And the truth is, boys and girls, oftentimes the best way for God to get us to turn to him and rely on him and to rest in him, the best way for him to do that is oftentimes to allow life... Yes, boys and girls, the truth is that oftentimes the best way for God to get us to turn to him, to rest in him, and to rely on him is to allow life to get the best of us momentarily. That's right, boys and girls, just momentarily. See, our all-knowing and all-powerful God, he can work through evil to accomplish good. And here is the good news, boys and girls. The wickedness that we see around us can never stop the perfect will of God that comes down from above us. Nope. It can't because God is sovereign and that is such good news. And that, boys and girls, brings us to today's message. So let's get right into the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God, boys and girls. So I want you to say it so that you can hear it, so that you will believe it. So let's say it together. Are you ready in three, two, one? And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it, it will surely come, it will not delay. It will not delay. Our message begins with God's answer to Habakkuk's question. And notice what God says. He says, write it down. It's always important to remember, boys and girls, that the words of the Bible are not just um, history. It's not just what God did, but it's also a reminder, and it teaches us and prepares us for what God does. That's right, for what God does. The message that God gave Habakkuk way back then to the people is important to you and I right here and right now. Now we are going to see in just a second about um, something that God gave Habakkuk. He gave Habakkuk some, he gave him some woes. No, maestro, not toes, but woes. He gave him some woes, and so we are going to learn, uh, and we're going to see what those woes are. Now, woe, the word woe, uh, comes from the Hebrew word, uh, it's ui, and it is a word that expresses grief and regret. It's a word that talks about misfortune beyond description. It's worse than you can possibly imagine. And so when God says woe, we better Whoa, camel, whoa, 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 camel, whoa! Oh, come on, whoa! When I say whoa, I mean whoa! When God says whoa, boys and girls, why we better whoa. We better stop what we are doing because if we continue doing what we're doing, we're going to end up hurting others. And if we continue and don't stop, we're going to end up hurting ourselves. And if we continue when God says whoa, when he says stop, we're going to end up bringing his correction and discipline upon us, boys and girls. 
whoa equals whoa. Whoa. Whoa equals whoa. Whoa. It means to stop. So let's take the next few minutes and see what some of those woes are, some of those things that we should stop. We're going to go right into the scripture, and we've got two, Habakkuk 2, 6 and 2, 12. Are you ready, boys and girls? Woe to him who heaps up what is not his own for how long and loads himself with pledges. Habakkuk 2.12. Woe to him who builds a town with blood and founds a city on iniquity. That's Habakkuk 2.12. God is saying in these verses, boys and girls, he is saying, whoa, he is telling us to stop. Stop. Give me a post. What about me? Good luck. He is telling us, boys and girls, to stop. To stop using others to lift ourselves up and to leave them behind. Stop. And he's telling us to stop, to stop stepping on others to get to where you and I want to go. And he's telling us, boys and girls, to stop. to stop, boys and girls, to stop taking from others to get what we want. See, here's the deal, boys and girls. When we are doing things God's way, we're going to find ourselves not doing things at the expense of some, but doing things at the benefit of all. When God says, whoa, he's telling us to stop, to stop taking advantage of others to get things and stuff, and to stop using others to stop using people for our gain. Whoa, stop. In Habakkuk 2.15, boys and girls, he says, whoa, again. And in this verse, he says, whoa. He's telling us to stop, to stop abusing things that he has given us. And he's telling us to stop something else. See, boys and girls, God's way is for us to be in unity. God's way is for us to put others first. That's God's way. And God's way... What's the missile now? That missile is targeted to the giant's current position. Where's the giant, Mansley? Well... When it comes down, everyone will die. There it is! Shouldn't we get to a shelter? It wouldn't matter.
And God's way, boys and girls, is to not make decisions based on our personal pleasure, but to be willing to make, to do things, to make sacrifices, and to do things for the benefit of others. That is God's way. I believe we've got a couple Bible verses. Philippians 2, 3, and 4, here we go. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Philippians 2, 3, and 4. 1 Corinthians 10, 33, here we go. Just as I try to please everyone in everything I do, not seeking my own advantage, but that of many that they may be saved. Corinthians 10, 33. See, here's the deal, boys and girls. God said in Habakkuk 2, 15, woe to taking advantage of the things he has given us to abuse the things God's given us. But also, God desires for us to value each other. We see that in these verses. When God says, whoa, in Habakkuk 2.15, he is telling us to stop, to stop taking advantage of others for our pleasure and to stop taking advantage, stop using people for our enjoyment. That's not how God wants us to operate. He wants us to value others, to put others first, and to work together with others. Here we go. Habakkuk 2.19. It is our last woe of the day. Here we go. Woe to him who says to a wooden thing, awake, to a silent stone, arise. Can this teach? Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in it. See, in this verse, boys and girls, God is saying, whoa. He is saying, stop. He's telling us to stop. To stop what? To stop worshiping our achievements, the things that we have made. To stop worshiping the things God has given us, the gifts and talents that he has provided us. As a matter of fact, let's go into God's word, give you an illustration of that. Here we go, Exodus 12, 35 and 36. Talking about worshiping what God gave us instead of worshiping him, the one who gave it. Here we go. Are you ready? The people of Israel had also done as Moses told them, for they had asked the Egyptians for silver and gold jewelry and for clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they let them have what they asked. Thus, they plundered the Egyptians. So here's what that Bible verse is saying, boys and girls. On their way out of Egypt, the Israelites, the children of God, slaves who had nothing, why, they were blessed by God. They were blessed by God because he freed them from slavery and the bondage and the horrible existence and way of life that they had as slaves in Egypt. And he also blessed them by giving them gold and silver on their way out. He provided them with gold and silver. He provided them with provisions. But we're going to see in just a second, boys and girls, instead of using the gifts God gave them, to bring him glory, well, we are going to see how they showed God their appreciation. We are going to see how they told God, thank you for all that he had done for them. Let's watch this clip, maestro. could I bring you except to Egypt? Where there is death? No, where there's food. Pharaoh would kill us all. Not if a god of Egypt went before us. You could make one for us, Aaron. No. Aaron knows the art of the temple. I will not. Mr. But we Jerry, can't will remain. He you. will not. He would rather see our flesh rot in the wilderness. You will make a god for us. A god of gold. A golden calf! <laughs> shall be the high priest. Bring baskets, buckets, jaws, anything you have. 
break off your earrings. Here, yeah, your bracelets, your necklaces. We will make of them a golden car. The golden foils we took from Egypt. Boys and girls, just a couple of months after God blessed them and gave them gold and silver, they used that gold and silver to make an idol, a golden calf, and then they threw a party and they worshiped the gold God gave them. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, boys and girls, it's true. While God was meeting with Moses on top of Mount Sinai, while God was meeting with Moses on top of Mount Sinai, where the presence of God was right above them on the mountain, they were worshiping an idol at the bottom of the mountain. Instead of going up the mountain with Moses like they were invited to do, they took the gold that God gave them and they made an idol. That, boys and girls, is so sad. And that brings us to... Reach, preach up, yes, sir. 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 Do you want a revolution? Say, do you want a revolution? Come on. Say, do you want a revolution? Yes, boys and girls, instead of going up into the presence of God and worshiping God, they took what God gave them and they made an idol and they worshiped the idol. And that brings us to our question today. Here we go. Here is my question for you to ponder. Have you, ready? I want you to think back in your life. Have you ever been more excited about something you have gotten? It could be a gift or a toy. Something you've gotten. Have you ever been more excited about something you've gotten or more excited about something you have done? Could maybe be an accomplishment, something really awesome that you did or maybe an activity that you were allowed to do. Have you ever been more excited about those things than spending time with God? Spending time learning about him and talking to him and being with him. Have you ever done that? Let's think about that. See if there's a, an example that you can come up with. Some thinking music, maestro. You know, boys and girls, John 13, 35 and Matthew 22, 37 and 39, why they tell us that the most important thing that we can do is to love God and to love each other and that we as followers of God should be known by our love. It's about love, boys and girls. And here's the deal. When we learn to love each other, when we learn to love God, well, you know what happens? Why the woe will go don't you know, yo. And that, maestro, brings us to our prayer time. So let's put on a little prayer music. We've got an image for you to think about. Got a golden calf there. And just a few minutes ago, I asked you to think about maybe something that you had got more excited about than God. Something became more important to you than even your relationship with God. We must all be careful, boys and girls, because it is easy to make idols from the blessings God gives us and to forget that who we worship is Him. He's the only one worthy of our worship. So let's get ready to pray. Heavenly Father, forgive us for making idols and for worshiping anything other than You. 
Thank you. Thank you for your woes, for your no's. And we just ask, Holy Spirit, that you would fill us with your fruit. Fill us with your love and your joy and your peace and your goodness and your kindness and your gentleness, faithfulness, patience, and self-control. Fill us. Fill us. Fill us. And we ask that you would help us to die to self and selfishness. Help us to love God and to love each other, to be known by our love. Help us to stop, to woe, to stop taking advantage of people for our gain and our pleasure. And help us to woe, to stop worshiping the things that you have given us. And help us to stop, to woe, to using others to get things for our gain. Help us to be who you've called us to be so that we'll be ready when you return. And we just ask this in the awesome, the powerful name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all of God's woeing, truth-knowing, love-growing people said... Amen!